Greetings, I'm Steve Bamford and welcome to the Steve Bamford Golf YouTube channel, the home of the Golf Betting Show and the Golf Betting System podcast. We're back with the 2024 Memorial Tournament. The Golf Betting Show is for viewers of 18 and above. Please be gamble aware. You can visit gambleaware.org for more information and of course please bet responsibly. Don't forget to visit Golf Betting System, the number one free golf betting resource. The Memorial Tournament is the week before the US Open, the third major of 2024. It's a signature event. It's loaded, short field. I think there is a cut because it's a, uh, a Jack Nicholas tournament as per Tiger Woods and Arnold Palmer. So we have got a cut involved, but the very best on the PGA Tour playing at Muirfield Village Golf Course. Of course, Dublin, Ohio. This is Jack's place. Right, what do I need from you guys? Well, it'd be fantastic. 250 likes. Let's, in fact, it's going to be a big week. Can we make it to 300? It'd be fantastic if you could do me the decency of pressing that like button. 300 likes. Also, if you are new to the Steve Bamford Golf YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe and make sure that your notifications button is pressed as well. That way, next Monday, you will receive the US Open Golf Betting Show as soon as, as it has uploaded. And of course, for the algorithm, and it's working guys, more views. Let's see, who do you fancy this week at the Memorial Tournament? So leave me your comments as well. Every comment drives that algorithm as long, along with the likes. And of course, that grows that channel. We are almost at 5,000 subscribers. Last week, I wasn't on Robert McIntyre. You won't be surprised to hear that. But close with Rory. Close also. Got an each way place on Maverick McNeely, who had, after a three over Thursday, I think he was like the third best scorer over the final 54 holes. So there is something still there about Maverick McNeely and very short golf courses. Now, that isn't the case this week. The Memorial Tournament, Jack's Backyard. We are dealing with a 7,569-yard par 72. Don't forget, this course from 2021 onwards received the last reno renovation from Jack Nicklaus himself. So, 21... 22 and 23 are played on this particular golf course. What seems to have happened is they've thinned some of the fairways down. They've made it less of a bomber's outright track. You need to be a little bit straighter off the tee. So it's a 74 original. This latest guys was established in 2021. Classical, tree-lined. Upstate, we're in Ohio. We're also dealing, of course, with a very long golf course, 7,569 yards, a par 72. Holes with water in play, just the 13. Number of sand bunkers, 68. Acres of fairway, 24. The fairways themselves are bent grass in terms of their agronomy. We are talking Kentucky bluegrass and rye grass with fescue rough up to four inches. Very similar to what we saw last week at... Hamilton uh, Golf and Country Club. The greens are 5,000 square feet on average. They're not huge. And the other thing here, plenty of sub air in play. Jack likes to give these guys a major, major test. He's not too fussed about player comments, moans and groans, about balls not holding on, on greens. Plenty of runoff areas now with this new renovation as well. Done away with a lot of the rough around the greens. As we saw last week, that is a way to combat scoring. It really is. Make sure that the green surrounds aren't thick with the rough, but with run-off areas. And that's the case here this week as well at Muirfield Village. It's a bit of a brute. Clearly a Jack Nicklaus design. If you have it looking for other Jack Nicklaus golf courses to look at for. Glen Abbey, 2008, 2013, 2015 to 2018 RBC Canadian Open. Montreux Golf and Country Club, where they uh, used to hold the Barracuda Championship. Um, that has uh, Colin Morikawa as its last winner. 
Old Greenwood Golf Club is the new Barracuda Championship golf course. We've got PGA International, where they used to hold the Honda, now the Cognizant Classic. Uh, there's plenty of PGA West form. The stadium course at the American Express. That's difficult to get hold of in terms of stroke gains, but it's basically one of four rounds that they hold at the American Express every year. Sherwood Country Club, that's interesting. 2020 Zozo Championship played there. The concession, that was the W, uh, the World Golf Championship, the Workday Championship in 2021, and Valhalla. We were there a few weeks ago, weren't we? The 2024 PGA and the 2014 PGA. Jack Nicholas Golf Courses. Now, we've gone through the agronomy. We're upstate now. Let's go through the weather. Now, the weather forecast. There's been plenty of rain in the area in the build-up. There looks like there's a huge, huge 90% chance of more rain on Wednesday afternoon prior to the Thursday start time as well. Temperatures themselves look pretty, pretty cold for the northern United States in the start of June. 17 to 25 degrees Celsius. Now, if I had my sheet with me, which I have left somewhere else, I would tell you the Fahrenheit. But the 25 degrees is effectively the Thursday only. It then goes from 17 to 19 degrees Celsius, which I think is 68 Fahrenheit. So it's not going to be warm. It's going to be Canada-like. It certainly isn't going to be Charles Swab Challenge-like down in Texas a few weeks ago, where it was over 34 degrees. So northern European-like weather and plenty of wind in play, 15 to 20 mile, a power, mile an hour westerly and northwesterlies throughout the whole week. I think round one is going to be soft, but once Jack and his course superintendent and all the staff there have turned up that sub air, I think you're going to start having releasing greens as of the Friday. Now, we've got three renewals here of the new golf course. 2021 Patrick Cantley, that was the year that John Rahm should have won, of course. He was like seven clear. Um, got called for COVID. 2022, Billy Horschel, 13 under. Patrick, Patrick Cantley, 13 under. Victor Hovland, 7 under last year. Extremely firm and fiery over the weekend. Now, if I look at those three winners and average through where those winners were across the strokes, gained skill categories uh, of those that made the cut, clearly with these, uh, the signature of Chen last year. I think, was there a miscut? I can't remember. It doesn't really matter. Strokes gained off the T7. Strokes gained on a green uh, approach 14th. Strokes gained around the green 12th. Strokes gained T to green 5th. Strokes gained putting 12th. Now, when you get a tournament whereby releasing greens, I think we could see a kind of Robert McIntyre winning performances from last year, or last week potentially, where basically, I think he of 17 full strokes gained, 15 of them were around the green and on the greens. That's ridiculous. Now, we have seen people like Denny McCarthy contend here, but ultimately, T to green fifth, Strokes gained putting, 12. I think, from memory, uh, bear with me here, I've actually got the numbers on this laptop. I think if you actually look at the raw strokes gain numbers, we are dealing with uh, strokes gained per course. 73% of the strokes gained from uh, from T to green. 27% percent from strokes gained on the green so that's basically averaging through at just a snidge under three strokes per round t to green just over one stroke per round on the green so team no putt yeah i can see this far more in effect than i could for colonial a couple of weeks ago where those splits were 1.74 t to green and 1.5 on the greens across average strokes gained per round. So a lot more T to green and just over one on the greens is the requirement to win this championship. So team no putt, yeah, definitely can see it. 
I think you're going to have to putt positively, mind you. But I think that, you know, if you're gaining like half a stroke, 0.6 of a stroke per round on the greens, you're definitely in play. Going through the traditional statistics, Hovland, Horschel, Cantlay. Driving distance, 28th. Not a bomber's golf course anymore. Driving accuracy, 29th. Greens in regulation, 7th. Proximity to hole, 10th approach play again. Scrambling 9th, putting average. Putts per GIR, 24th. That's crazy. So one, uh, 20th place for Cantlay. 43rd place for Horschel. 9th place for Victor Hovland. As I said, team no putt in effect. Right. The, Betty, uh, the predictor model. Predictor model for this week. I was playing with it very, very early in terms of the predictor model. Monday morning over here in the UK in the beautiful garden of England, the shires of the UK, outside of London. Now, um, this is the top 10 that my predictor model came up with. You, of course, can run your own predictions as many times as you want, completely free of charge. There is a link in the description box. Don't forget... If you follow me on X, that would be fantastic, at Bamford Golf. Hit that like button. The most you could do, the best you can do, like the program. Uh, 300 likes, I think that is achievable this week, the week before a major. And of course, subscribe to the channel. Top 10. I've got Justin Thomas at 10, 25 to 1 with Bet365. 9 is Victor Hovland, 18 to 1 with Bet365. 8, Alex Noren, 80 to 1 with Bet Fred. Seven, Shane Lowry, 66 to 1 with Bet Fred. Six, Corey Connors, 55 to 1 with Bet Fred. Five, Tony Finau, 50 to 1 with Bet Fred. Top four, Colin Morikawa, 16 to 1 with Bet Fred. Three is Rory McElroy, 8 to 1 with Bet 365. Two, Xander, 17 to 2 with Bet Fred. That's right, shorter than Rory McElroy. And number one, of course, Scotty Scheffler, 15 to 4 with Bet365. We now have a big three in the betting markets. Scotty favourite, Scheffler in the main second favourite, Rory interchangeable with Xander in that top three as well. There is then a gap to Morikawa and to Victor Hovland and the like. Right, don't forget, yeah, pr uh, the predictor model, you can come and use that model completely free of charge at Golf Bank system, system. We've also got strokes gained rankings, which I find very, very useful. Again, a link in the description box to those. Broken down by skill set, so off the tee, around the green, putting, strokes gained, ball striking, it's all there. Right, I will take you through the top 12 of my strokes gained numbers. Now, this is going back to the Masters. It is strokes gained off the tee, approach around the green, tee to green, putting and total. I've got full top 25 rankings available in my betting preview. The link is in the description box. I'll take you through the top 12. Off the tee, good this week, vital this week. Ricky Fowler and Victor Hovland tie for 12. Ben Arn at 11. Justin Thomas at 10. Kurt Kitayama at 9. Eight is Jordan Spieth. Seven is Sun Jae-in. Six is Xander. Five is Wyndham Clark. Four is Rory McIlroy. Three, Colin Morikawa. Yeah, you heard that right. Two, Ludwig Oberg. Number one, Scotty Scheffler. Strokes gained on approach. Top 12. A tie for 10th. Keegan Bradley, Kurt Kisiyama and Rory McIlroy. A tie for 8th. Tony Finau and Will Zalatoris. A tie for 5th. Russell Henley, Tom Hoagie and Victor Hovland. Fourth is Corey Connors. Three is Scotty Scheffler. Two is Xander Schofler. Number one is Sepp Straka. Now, strokes gained around the green was fairly important for this, wasn't it? So let's take you through the top 12 last eight weeks. 12 are Ty Sam Burns, Jason Day, Sung J. Im and Adam Hadwin. 11 is Andrew Putnam. 10 is Patrick Rogers. 9 is Scotty Scheffler. 8 is Tommy Fleetwood. 7 is Max Homer. Six is Christian Bizaden Hoot. Five, Colin Morikawa. Four, Patrick Cantlay. Three, Hideki Matsuama. Two, Russell Henley. And number one is Justin Thomas. T to green, top 12. 
A tie for 11th, Tommy Fleetwood and Tom Hoagie. A tie for 9th, Keegan Bradley and Patrick Cantlay. 8 is Sepp Straka. 7, Russell Henley. A tie for 5th, Zander Chauflé and Justin Thomas. 4, Kurt Kitayama. 3, Rory McIlroy. 2, Colin Morikawa. Number 1 is Scotty Scheffler. And strokes gain total, the best players across the last 8 weeks. Top 10, uh, top 12. A tie for 10th. Ludwig Oberg, Christian Bezadenhut, Corey Connors and Lucas Glover. Eighth, Keegan Bradley tied with Justin Thomas. I haven't gone for Keegan Bradley this week. Could be a big error. Seven is Tommy Fleetwood. Six is Billy Horshaw. Five is Russell Henley. Four is Rory McIlroy. A tie for second, Colin Morikawa and Xander Schofler. Number one is Scotty Too Hotty Scheffler. Winning prices of winners of this. 2023, 20 to 1, Victor Hovland. 2022, 60 to 1, Billy Horschel. 2021, Patrick Cantlay, 22 to 1. 2020, John Rahm, 22 to 1. 2019, Patrick Cantlay, 18 to 1. Bryson DeChambeau at 50 to 1. We've seen this year with the signature events, we've seen um, four favourites win the last four events. Scotty Scheffler three times, Rory McIlroy the last at the Wells Fargo. We're seeing here also a trend. 50 to 1 Bryson DeChambeau, 60 to 1 Billy Horschel. No winner here between anything from 25 to 1 through to 50 to 1. So 45s, 40s, 33s, all don't win here. And that trend is something we've seen all through 2024 as well. Either crazy short prices up to 20 to 1 Billy Horschel. We've had 18 to 1 Xander win the PJ Championship. That was only a spot. He was 14 to 16 in most places for the PGA. And then we've got single digit winners. Okay, where am I at this week? I've kept it particularly tight. As I was saying, Scheffler has won three of the last four signature events as favourite 13 to 2, 11 to 2, 9 to 2. He's a 7 to 2 general chance this week at the Memorial. I haven't seen him win on this kind of agronomy. So. I'm prepared to take Scotty on. Now, of course, all of the legal stuff has been quashed. We also had 17 to 2 favourite Rory McIlroy winning, as Rory McIlroy does at Quail Hollow. Prior to that, 150 to 1 Chris Kirk, 70 to 1 Wyndham Clark, 80 to 1 Hideki Matsuama. Signature events. So I am going for 14 to 1. Three points each way, 14 to 1, ball sport, take places each way. Colin Morikawa. I am seeing Colin as big right now as 16 to 1 with Bet Fred. If you fancy that. That price is in place. It play. It's in play at this tournament. It's in play just as we're talking across 2024 as well. This guy, he tops my Jack Nicholas variable on the predictor model. That's, so that is performances on Jack Nicholas designs over the past five years. He is number one in this field. Three of his six victories on the PGA Tour on Jack Nicholas designs. One of those here, the 2020 Workday uh, Open, was it? Yeah, Workday Charity Open, 2019 rather. <coughs> that was before the update. I think the update suits him, to be fair. Uh, less emphasis on bombing power. More emphasis on accuracy and straightness. His ball striking is exemplary last uh, at the moment. His last win was the Zozo at the end of 2023. He has been in the mix across third at the Masters, ninth at the RBC Heritage, 16th at the Wells Fargo Championship, fourth at the PGA, fourth at the Charles Schwab Challenge. He is due. He is so due. I think this course is pretty perfect for him. I've taken 14 to 1, eight places each way with ball sports on Colin Morikawa. Next up, here's a record that I think is 
fascinating. These are the times that Victor Hovland has defended. There are four of them. The 2022 WWT, sorry, the 2021 WWT Championship at El Comedian. He won. First ever time he defended a professional title. In November 22, he then went back to El Comedian again and finished 10th. A month later, he played the hit and giggle at the Hero World Challenge at the Albany Golf Course in the Bahamas. He won that. Last year, he went back to Albany and finished. Uh, he then went back 12 months later and won that. And then last year when he defended, he was 10th. So he's had a first, a 10th, a first and a 10th when defending professional titles. Love the look of that. Love the look at his performance at the PGA Championship of Valhalla and with uh, swing coach Joe Mayo back in the saddle. Played beautiful golf there. He was the only guy really who kept Xander and Bryson honest on the Sunday at Valhalla. Clearly loves this golf course. Won here last year at 20 to 1. 16 to 1 with bet 365. Eight places each way. I have taken with Victor Hovland via their each way extra facility. He is 18 to 1 in their general five places each way. A quarter the odds market. Also, I am taking two points each way, 22 to 1 with Bet365 again on their eight, place, eight places market each way extra. You can get 25 to 1 again with Bet365 via their general five places each way. I caught the odds market. Justin Thomas, DeChambeau, Cantlay the first time, Hovland the first time. <laughs> they basically took this out as their most senior victory on the PGA Tour to date. You could also say that potentially about John Rahm as well. He had won the, oh, well, he'd won the Farmers Open and he'd also won the Career Builder Challenge. This, though, was his biggest event to date, undoubtedly, when he won here in 2020. Now, you can also look at it from a perspective that John Rahm hadn't won on the PGA Tour in a singles uh, tournament, you know, without the likes of a Ryan Palmer uh, at the team event in the Zurich for well, coming on for two years. And Billy Horshaw hadn't won in a singles event for five years. Yes, he'd won the World Max Play the year before. He'd also won the team event at the Zurich. But on his own in stroke play, he hadn't won on the PJ Tour for five years. So there is a precedent there for people reigniting their winning uh, performances here at this tournament and what a better way to do it than literally having Jack Nicklaus shake your hand the week before the US Open at his golf course wouldn't it be sweet after Xander's emotional victory the first major of his career at the PGA Championship and after Robert McIntyre winning with his father Doogie last year uh, last week at Hamilton at the RBC Canadian Open wouldn't it be great to see Justin Thomas end this bleak winless period of over 24 months here this week in the past he has won in boston he has won in firestone he has also won at medina massachusetts ohio and illinois respectively he can get the job done in these parts he was tw uh, runner-up here at the 2020 Workday Charity Open, a playoff loss to Colin Morikawa. I loved the way that he played golf at the PGA recently. Eighth at the PGA was his best major since the 2022 PGA Championship victory. He ranked seventh for off the tee, third for greens in regulation, I love that. Fifth for strokes gained around the green, and first for strokes gained, T to green, better than Bryson DeChambeau, Xander, and Victor Hovland. In good nick, team no putt, fully in effect with JT, we know that. But his game is coming round. I would love it, because I, I am a JT fan. I would absolutely love to see JT win this. Bet365, eight places each way available via their each way extra facility at 22 to 1 you heard me read the winning odds of winners here that is a popular price jack's tournament 
Justin Thomas. Came very close with Keegan Bradley. Like the look of him this week. Not so sure he can back up a second place, though, with a win. That was my gut feel on him. Love the way that Ricky Fowler struck the ball at Colonial. I think he's available at triple-digit prices. Didn't like the way that the guys offering eight places each way were absolutely cutting their odds to pieces on Fowler. Not sure I see a top six, top five. Could see a top eight each way payout for him. Also, Justin Rose struck the ball beautifully at Colonial Country Club. He's bound to find the positives from his best mate on the Ryder Cup team, Robert McIntyre, winning last week. But I went for another elite golfer who really hasn't had a great year. But you look at his numbers, you look at the way he's playing, you look at his core numbers, he's playing very well off the tee. His approach play is fantastic. Again, a very spotty putter. He's 43rd in the FedEx Cup. He's 17th. This is really getting to the sort of nuts and bolts of it. He's 17th in Team USA President's Cup qualification. Now, outside of the top 12 qualifiers right now, and I know that the captain, Jim Furyk, does get six captain's picks, but outside the top 12 autos right now, Sam Burns, Justin Thomas, Jordan Spieth, Ricky Fowler, and this particular individual. Now, I can't see Justin. Uh, I can't see um, Jim Fury throwing a, a lifeline to all of those. That's not going to be possible. These guys need to step up to the mark. I think that's why JT's a cracking bet this week. I really do. I think Fowler needs to start showing something in general. But Fowler, when he wins tournaments, he needs top tens, top eights, top fives, and eventually he wins at a terrible price. Tony Finau though has won from nowhere. He does, like live, uh, he does like winning upstate. Michigan, New Jersey, and Minnesota are three states where he has won on the PGA Tour. Shot an opening 65 at the PGA. Shot an opening 66 at Colonial. He was 10th and 6th heading into the final round at both Valhalla and Colonial. So he's starting to find form. Hasn't come up to any fruition on a Sunday yet, but that will come. 8th, 11th, 13th and 8th here across general outings going back to 2015. I took Tony Finau at 45 to 1 with full 8 places, bet 365. He is 50 to 1 with bet Fred, 5 places each way at a quarter the odds on Tony Finau. Again, needs to find something. I can see Finau going on a run now. If it's not US Open, it needs to be stuff like the 3M Open. It needs to be Rocket Mortgage Classic to get that momentum running, to get a captain's pick. So Tony Finau at 45 to 1. I've got Justin Thomas at 22 to 1. Defending champion Victor Hovland at 16 to 1. I've got Colin Morikawa at 14 to 1. If you're still with me, at Bamford Golf on X. Don't forget, like the show. 300 likes, please. Let's get there. Also, press that subscribe button of course we'll be back next week leave me your comments as well we'll be back next week for the us open i'll be wearing my best collar and tie see you then soon